If you've listened to my stories before, then you know that my grandpa grew up in Virginia, way back in the Appalachian Mountains, in a small town called Arno. His father, whose name was Vilder, was was a reverend, or preacher, if you are from these mountains. Known as a hellfire preacher, he would take his coat off, roll up his sleeves, and preach by lifting his voice, chanting in a rhythmic way, barely breathing between sentences. He drun, chanting about the fires of hell, waiting on us sinners, if we didn't repent, that was the way mountain preachers did their preaching back in the day. The preacher's house was on a dirt road, with years of wear from, wagons, horses and automobiles, on this dirt road, branches and vines made a tunnel as they twisted together to cover the road, in the mountains, it gets dark as the sun falls from the sky. And inside this tunnel, it's even darker. One night, the preacher was headed home and he came to the tunnel, he said he felt an uneasy feeling as he entered the pitch black darkness of the overhang. As he walked, he heard twigs pop inside the vines. Then without a warning, he felt something jump onto his back, a hot breath on his neck. He struggled to reach behind him and feel what was on his back, but felt nothing. He felt its weight, weighing him to the ground, he felt claws, digging into his shoulders and back, he could feel blood, running down his skin. He fought hard until he got to the end of the tunnel. As soon as one foot stepped out of its shadow, whatever was on his back, just leapt off. Releasing him as fast as it had, grabbed hold of him, he ran as fast as he could towards home. He burst into the old wooden house, and yelled for my Native American grandma, Vesti, to come help him. He tore his dress shirt off, he began telling Vesti about what had happened. He told her to gather her medicines, she knew the mountain and its plants. She made poultices and salves to heal, it was passed down in her native family, for generations. She gathered them and as the preacher screamed, she saw no wounds, no blood, no marks, not even a scratch. She felt his head to see if he had a fever, thinking he may be suffering some sickness. But she felt no hotness to his head, he was confused at what had jumped onto his back that night. At first, he was sure it was a mountain panther. We have those deep in the Appalachian, mountains, some believe that, some don't. But if you have seen one or if you have heard one, as the preacher had, you believed it. But no marks meant, no cat. It is still a mystery what it was that night, that attacked the preacher, but left no scar, nor blood. That old tree tunnel still stands, and something tells me, that whatever it was that night, it still stands.